In this video, we'll discuss how to partition a linked list based on a given value. So we are given head of a linked list and a value x. We need to partition the linked list such that all nodes which are less than x come before nodes greater than or equal to x. While partitioning the linked list, we need to preserve the original relative order of the nodes in each of the two partitions. Let's take few examples that will make it more clear. So we are given this linked list and the value of x is 4. So we need to partition the linked list such that all the nodes which are less than 4 come before nodes which are greater than or equal to 4. So the nodes which are less than 4 are 1 and 3. So basically 1 and 3 should come before the other nodes. So the other nodes are 5, 6, 9 and 4. So the output of this linked list will be 1, 3, 5, 6, 9, 4. So we are keeping the nodes which are less than 4 before all the nodes which are greater than or equal to 4. So 1 and 3 are less than 4. So these nodes are coming before all the nodes which are greater than or equal to 4. So 5, 6, 9, 4 are coming after 1 and 3. And while keeping these, we are keeping the relative order of all the nodes. So here you can see 1 is coming before 3 and the relative order of the other nodes are 5, 6, 9, 4. So we are keeping the same order here. So we need to partition it also, but preserve the order also. Let's take one more example. So now the head is at 1 and the value of x is 3. So the nodes which are less than 3 are 1, 2 and 2. So 1, 2 and 2 should come before the other nodes which are 4, 3 and 5. So the output of this linked list is 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 5. So we kept all the nodes which are less than 3 to the left and all the remaining nodes came to the right and we have preserved the order also. Now once the problem statement is clear, let's see how we can solve this. So we have this linked list and the value of x is 4. So the problem statement says that we need to partition the linked list such that the nodes which are less than x come before all the nodes which are greater than or equal to x. So if we create two linked list L1 and L2, so L1 has all the nodes which are less than x and L2 has all the nodes which are greater than or equal to x. If we keep track of these two linked list and at the end if we join these linked list then we'll have our answer because L1 has all the nodes which are less than x and L2 has all the nodes which are greater than or equal to x. So whenever we come across a node, we'll see whether we can put it into L1 or L2. So x is 4 and we have node 5. So 5 is greater than 4, so it should come in L2. Then we come to 6. So 6 is also greater than 4, so it will also come in L2. Then we have 9. 9 will also come in L2 because it is greater than 4. Then we have 1. So 1 is less than 4, so it will come in L1. Then we have 4. So greater than or equal to 4 will come in L2. So 4 will also come in L2. And then we have 3. So 3 is less than 4, so it will come in L1. So now we have partitioned the nodes based on the value of x. So we have 1, 3, 5, 6, 9, 4. So now we just have to join L1 and L2. So if we just join 3 with 5, basically the last node of L1 with the first node of L2. So this will be our linked list. 1, 3, 5, 6, 9, 4. So we have preserved the order of the nodes also. So 1 is coming before 3 and 5, 6, 9, 4 are in the same order. So we have preserved the order also and we have partitioned the node also. So just traverse the linked list starting from the head and keep track of two linked list. And at the end we'll join both the linked list. So we'll do the same steps in the algorithm. In many of my previous linked list videos, 
I have explained that we can make linked list problems quite easier by keeping track of dummy pointers. So basically dummy pointers help us to avoid the conditions when the linked list is empty. So I will also explain here why do we need dummy pointers. But for now let's assume that we have two dummy pointers dummy 1 and dummy 2. So dummy 1 will point to the first node of the linked list 1 and dummy 2 will point to the linked list 2. Then we keep track of two heads. Head 1 points to dummy 1 and head 2 points to dummy 2. Then we traverse the linked list starting from the head. We check if the value of head is less than x. So we are checking that if 5 is less than 4. So this is false. So we come to the else part and we say head to next is equal to head. So head to next is pointing to node 5. And then we moved head 2 to the next node. So head 2 comes at 5. And then we moved head to the next node. So head comes at 6. So why we kept dummy 1 and dummy 2 is. So if we have kept head 1 and head 2 as null. Then here head 2 will be null. So we will have to keep some if conditions that if head 2 is null then point head 2 to head. So there will be many if else conditions based on the value of head 1 and head 2. So to avoid all those if else and keep the code clean we keep track of these two dummy pointers. So these act as the first node of the new linked list and when we are done with the algorithm we will delete these two dummy nodes. So this trick is quite frequently used in most of the linked list problems. So in the next iteration we check if 6 is less than 4. So this is also false we come in the else part and we set head to next is equal to head. So we point next of 5 to head which is 6. And then we move head 2 to the next node. So head 2 comes at 6. And then we move head to the next node. So head comes at 9. So in the next step we compare head with x. So head is 9 and we are comparing 9 with 4. So again this is false. We come in the else part and we set head to next to 9. So next of 6 becomes 9 and we move head 2 to the next node which is 9. And then we set head 2 to next node so head comes at 1. So in the next iteration we compare head which is 1 with 4. So now this is true. So next of head 1 becomes head. So head 1 is at dummy 1. Next of head points to 1 and then we move head 1 to the next node. So head 1 comes at 1 and then we move head to the next node. So head comes at 4. In the next step we compare 4 with x which is also 4. So this is false. We come to the else part and we set next of head 2 to 4. So 9 points to 4 and head 2 also comes at 4 and then we move head to next node which is at 3. In the next iteration we compare 3 with 4 which is true. So next of head 1 points to 3 and head 1 moves to node 3 and then head moves to the next node which is null. So in the next iteration we compare head with null. So now head becomes null. So this while loop terminates. And after this we set next of head 1 to next of dummy 2. So next of head 1 means this 3. So this 3 points to 5 because 5 is next of dummy 2. So we have linked first linked list with the second linked list. And then we set next of head 2 to null. So we are setting next of 4 to null. And in the last step we return next of dummy 1. So we are returning pointer to 1.
So this will be our new head of the linked list. So the linked list becomes 1, 3. Now 3 is pointing to 5, 5, 6, 9 and 4. So this will be our new linked list after partitioning. So we'll also delete these two nodes dummy1 and dummy2 so as to not cause any memory leak. But this is the overall logic of the algorithm. We keep two linked lists, one which has values less than x and one which has values greater than or equal to x. Once we have traversed the entire linked list, we join both the linked list. The time complexity of this method is order of n because we are traversing the linked list only once and the space complexity is order of 1. So once you've understood the algorithm, let's have a look at the implementation. All the source code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository, link of which is present here and as well as in the description. Now let's have a look at the code. In the main function, I've created both the linked list which I've shown in the left side and then I pass head of this linked list and a value x to this partition function. In this partition function, I first check if the head is null or there is only one node. Because if there is only one node or the head is null, we do not need to do any processing and we can just return the head node. After that, I create two dummy nodes, dummy1 and dummy2 and I set pointers of head1 and head2 to dummy1 and dummy2. Then I traverse the linked list starting from head and I compare each value with x. If the value is less than x, then I point the value to head1, otherwise I point the value to head2. Once the entire linked list is traversed, I join both the linked list. So I set next of head1 to next of dummy2 and I set next of head2 to null. Then I delete the dummy nodes and I return the pointer to the partitioned linked list. And in the main function, I print the partitioned linked list. Let's see the output of this program. So the first linked list was 569143. I partitioned it around 4. So the output is 135694. And the second linked list I partitioned around 3 and I have obtained the desired output. Now this problem is also available on lead code as question number 86 partition list. I pasted the same code here and it is success. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. If you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.